What's going on, everybody? This is a segment from the Nerdgasm Talk podcast. If you like podcasts, well, why don't you come join us as the crew gets silly and Philly while we sit to talk about the latest in comics, games, movies, and all things pop culture. You guys can listen to our whole show on all the podcasts that we're on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, wherever you guys get your podcasts from. And make sure you guys also support the channel by subscribing to the Nerd Coalition Studios. And for the gaming needs, make sure you subscribe to Nerd Coalition level up this is the nerd coalition hope you guys enjoyed the show and now feel the nerdgasm uh last time we talked me and swag talk he, he gave us review for uh wakanda forever uh black panther wakanda forever and told us his honest thoughts he said it was a good movie not a great movie was it his favorite out the two which i don't i can't compare both the movies but i understand all film subjective but now that ended phase four and then so me and him was talking about phase four i said did you see the raw video uh sway i did not i'm sorry i, I meant the you watcher. asked me to send you early know, in the know, morning <laughs> he texted you to some kind of morning hey yo you want to see that raw whoa, video whoa. no need to get no need to get mad you need some sleep man what you say sway it's okay man you need some sleep buddy you oh just, my God. well you know I, I gotta change my tank but yeah other than that I, yeah sure man. <laughs> But Somebody, no, please. no, it was just funny. He 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 was texting me, and I was just like, "Oh, he he like gave me like an urgent text." I said, "Oh, sure, my no problem. I will give it to you right now." What is this video? I remember how I was explaining, you know, Rob Jefferson, the guy with the voice who does comments, explain uh-huh. he gave his he gave his thoughts on Phase Four and how he would have handled it. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. I got what you're saying. <clears throat> and I, and right. I, I think, you know, because... I thought he, you were talking about somebody we knew. I was like, I'm confused. No, okay. well, I, oh, we know me and Rob. Me, me, me and uh, Swag know Rob Jefferson. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's make fun of his voice. In a good hey. way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he, he, I think he did a good video about it. So I was like, but you know what? I want to talk with us about Phase 4. I want to rank our Phase 4 TV shows and movies <laughs> and what what was the good and uh, the bad and what, 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 what we could have done different, especially going into Phase 5 because I, I have all those thoughts. So, uh, would y'all want me to start or would y'all... Uh, yes, please. Okay. Sure. Okay. Let me bring up, I'm going to bring up my Phase 4 shows. Lemonade. Not to be honest, I was telling my wife something. Uh okay so what I'm sorry uh so here here here, here I have it here I always you know write these things down so I'm gonna start with movies this is how I rank them this is from my best to worst mm-hmm. in, in my in my and I want to say these are all our opinions everybody's opinion can change and that's the point we're gonna discuss and how uh, just talk about how we feel about it so I have Spider Man No Way Home Black Panther Wakanda Forever Shang Chi Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, Black Widow, Thor, Love and Thunder, and the Eternals. That's how I, I have feel like them. that kind of mirrors what my list would be like. I'd have to go through the actual. Mine's a slight changes. Let me do. Yeah. Let me. Then when it now. comes to my TV shows, from best to worst. Oh, it, okay. So you're doing separate. Yes. Okay. And I put them together. Uh, when it comes to my TV shows for. Face on my best to worst goes WandaVision, Loki, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Moon Knight, What If, She Hawk, Hawkeye, and Miss Marvel. Now I understand there will be more of a debate with TV shows, but I, I have my my reasons of why I ranked them that way. Okay. <clears throat> Is it uh since I know Lacey she'll get her list together. Swag, yeah, do you wanna I'll, go? <clears throat> Yeah, I do mine. Now, I did not see Thor, Love and Thunder yet. <laughs> the more I think about it, the less I want to see it. I feel like However, you don't I, have to. I do want to see it after watching that uh, Guardians trailer, but I'll get to that when we uh-huh. uh, get to that point. Uh, number one, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Number two, Spider-Man No Way Home. Number three, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Number four, Black Widow. Number five, Doctor Strange's uh, Multiverse of the Madness. Number six, Eternals. Yeah, Eternals was definitely a fall Ooh, that was from a, grace. That was a hot <laughs> steaming pile of... Like, you know when you see somebody trip on TikTok? And, <laughs> and, you, and you fall in love like that. It's like, damn, Marvel took an L. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, no, it was like, ooh. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, <clears throat> the biggest cast, show. too. Oh. Okay, go ahead. TV show. Oh, no, my bad. Oh, okay. I thought you were used to TV shows. Now, this is probably definitely going to start a debate. Hawkeye, number one. Ouch. She Hawk, number two. Okay. Number three, Miss Marvel. Number four, WandaVision. Number five, Falcon Winter Soldier, which I watched again. It's much better uh, being binged. Uh, number seven, I agree Loki. With me. Uh-huh. Number eight, What If. Oh, wait, Moon Knight. I forgot about Moon Knight. Uh, I'll put Moon Knight over WandaVision. So, so um, Hawkeye, She Hawk, Miss Marvel, Moon Knight, WandaVision, Falcon and the Soldier, Loki, and What If. Ooh, okay. We, we got a lot to discuss on the or on the personal yeah. taste, personal Pro, taste, yeah. personal <laughs> taste, personal, personal taste. taste. What, what's, what, what's now, up? Um, Florence and Haley Steinfeld conversation did have a high advantage on they. Marvel knew the demographic. They knew I was going to watch that scene multiple times. They, so, they, they know their audience. Yeah, exactly. So that 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 took a that that was definitely an advantage. Okay, is it my turn? Yes, yes, Lacey, here tonight. You go for your movies. Okay, so I'm going to go <clears throat> for the films. I will go... Ooh. Now, I just want a disclaimer. I'm not saying that this order doesn't necessarily mean that they're the best of the movies. I guess the order I like them the most. Because yeah. I know that some people well, like film, to confuse that. Film is subjective. It's subjective. So I'm gonna have to say Shang Chi, Spider Man No Way Home, Black Panther. Um, actually, sorry. Shang Chi, Black Panther, Doctor Strange, Spider Man No Way Home. I would say that's a little bit above it, but. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I guess depending on what I'm, the day I'm watching it, Black Widow, uh, Love and Thunder, and Eternals. If I could not put Eternals, like if I could take the time back that I I used to watch Eternals, I would. Um, I agree. Eternals was that. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! It was that like, was bro, <laughs> it was. It kind of felt like it was never going to end. You ever watch something who's just like, how much more time is left in this? Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. That's exactly how I felt watching Batman. <laughs> um. So for the uh, underworld, the, the series I think I, you know what. All right, <laughs> he did that on purpose. The series I think I have a more concrete list of things where it's like it's not so. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. So number one with the bullet for me was Moon Knight. So Moon Knight, Wandavision, um, in terms of how much I liked it, She Hulk. Loki, I didn't see what if, so it's not gonna be in the list. Hawkeye, Falcon and Winter Soldier, Miss Marvel. Of the bits and pieces that I've seen, if I saw any of it, it's probably gonna be at the bottom. I saw very uh little what if. Only saw a few ep- like a couple episodes. Mm-hmm. So I can't judge the whole series. Um same thing with Thor Love and Thunder. I only saw what about an hour of that and I was yeah. just like mm, I don't think I need to see the rest. <laughs> I know where this sits for me. <laughs> so yeah I think that's that's everything right? Even though the post credit scene was absolutely fantastic. That's but fine yeah. but yeah. I gotta get through the rest of it to get to yeah. the post credit scene. Yeah I, I agree. Like bro I'll just google it. Shit. Alright so okay so obviously we, we have differences so I, I'll do my Explain it because uh, I thought I thought uh, when it came to Phase Four, Phase Four started off great, and I think that they because I went to some more research because I did not know that Kevin Foggy was losing some power, oh. and he got some power back. That uh, what's been happening behind the scenes with Phase Four is the reason why the Doctor Strange director left, mm-hmm. and Sam Raimi came in. Mm. And the people with and the people that was working on on their team, including Sam Raimi, admitted that they never seen Wandavision before. Dang. And I, I, cause see, I remember when we, we was having that debate before. I was like, something 
And I remember you was like, Marvel never promised us this. I'm just like, they physically, they, they out their mouth didn't promise us this, but in a way, they kind of did. But something don't seem right with Doctor Strange in this movie. And they come, and while I do some more research, I I found out that there wasn't something that that that, uh, that wasn't right mm-hmm. with Doctor Strange in the way it was going because you could you can really tell the shift in Phase Four after the Eternals came out. It seemed. It seems yeah. so misguided. Like the whole phase just seemed very wayward. In a way, it, 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 it in in a way it can't. I I I have my reasons for that, and I really think that there's there's there was an opportunity that they did not take, and I think they was trying to be you know okay this is a good this is a a new phase we're trying to I think I think there was I think it was oversaturated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, they they tried to show too too much stuff, uh, and it wasn't it wasn't tying up it wasn't it it wasn't it wasn't rewarding when Kevin Feige and Kevin Feige made this mistake also which he has admitted that he told us in the beginning when they started making the Disney Plus shows that these shows are connecting to the movie cinematic universe yeah these are not their own spinoff shows. I- that's where you kind of you he tripped up at. You and, shouldn't have told us. And that. To, to the point where you said that. So now we, when you go out there and watch the shows, it, it's just like I remember. You know, when I, when I was following the whole Saw franchise, when you're following something because because the director or the storyteller wants you to follow this stuff, it's not rewarding. I mean, you, you want to be rewarded when you find some things out, or you know, when there's going to be a payoff. It's kind of like when, when I watch wrestling. And you, you got to be able to tell a good story, which Mr. Man wasn't able to do for the past 20 years. Jesus Christ. And when you got to tell a good story, and there got to be some kind of payoff for what you're building up to. And in phase four, there was a lot of planting, little build, but there was no payoff, especially when it came to these TV shows. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, that kind of upset the fan base a little bit. And I also felt that way. When it came to payoff, when it came to Doctor Strange, and I was like the, the payoff that we that we that we thought that we was going to get from Doctor Strange never came, and it was kind of disappointing for a lot of people. I'm not talking about payoff like when it comes to uh, what was it Sway that we kept talking about when it came to the devil. Um, and Loki. If WandaVision, remember? Oh, uh, gosh, what was his name? It's, it, exactly. Wh- whoever the, the the devil was in Marvel yeah. Comics. Mephisto? But everyone was like... Mephisto, oh, yeah. Yeah. Why do I know that? Because you've been around a long time. But I'm saying, when we were talking, talking about the payoff for that, and, 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 and the thing with Dr. Strange, it was like, it, we just didn't get it. It was just like... Right. Damn, we was really... Uh, going there, and then once again, yes, the Marvel say Mephisto was going to be there. No, but did they foreshadow? They kind of did. If oh yeah, go, yeah. If, if you go back, they, they, they kind of did. And usually, when it came to certain payoffs, it's like it's fun to do the payoffs. But I was like, but this was so left, you know, on certain things. So, <clears throat> me personally, the phase four, uh, like like the good, I think we got some good individual stories that need to be told. Shang Chi. I think was the excellent thing to do because I do I know anything about Shang Chi? Absolutely not. No, but I very much enjoyed that movie. Yes, yeah, I enjoyed. I the movie. really like that movie. Exactly, and I, you know how we over in this house feel about representation. So I, mm-hmm. I really because you know what it gave me that that, that, that representation representation feel of Crazy Rich Asians, even though that was a comedy, yeah. right? But it gave me that like it's like you know. The representation for Asians for, for like for Black Panther, like you know, let, let's get this community out here and showcase, you know, that, that they, they got superheroes as well, right. and, and, huh? Yeah, I'm still yeah. agreeing with you. I think that structurally, Black Widow was a decent movie. Its placement is was, what killed it. Is what killed yeah. it. Yeah, it I agree it twice. with that. Um, I've rewatched that as well. Yeah. I, not I, I, horrible. I, I, it's not horrible, but I agree with the placement and what they did to Taskmaster. But that's uh, either here or uh, there. God. yeah, because how, how 
me and uh, Swag are familiar with Taskmaster, that kind of bothered the fuck out of us. You know what I'm saying? Ta- Taskmaster was supposed to be that mm. guy. Like, that. Yeah. Like, oh, and, and, and don't get me wrong. It wasn't because they turned him into a woman. Right. That yeah, is, it was the, just, that's yeah. even on the list of problems with Taskmaster. You know. I, my thing with Black Widow, it was more so... I was checked out before I went into it. I for sure watched Black Widow simply because they released it and it was part of the MCU and not because it seemed like it made sense. Like, we've already watched everything play out. She, spoiler alert, she did. So, why would I want to see her origin story and all of the, and, and all of this about her and we know she has already been essentially written out of the, uh, MCU. MCU. Uh-huh. I don't know what word I was looking for. But I'm just like, it just, it made no sense. So, when you go into something checked out already, you're not going to give it a fair shot. Mm-hmm. And even just trying to look at it, I like, just watch it as a movie, I was just like, I, I'm, it's, I'm having a hard time getting into this. Okay. Especially for the first movie of Phase 4. Yes. Yeah. It was just like, okay... Like if that was like a little TV special, sure. I didn't. I, I didn't think this shit came out the gate with Shane Chi. Yeah, I agree. Shane Chi was incredible. Yeah, and then I like how Ryan Coogler brought us back around when it came to Black Panther: Wakanda Forever, and mm-hmm. uh, gave us that gave us that feeling of what we was building up in Phase Four at the beginning. Also, dealing with that impossible task as the Chadwick passed away. Because right. not only did that affect Black Panther, I did that, that. That just affected Phase Four, period. Absolutely. You know, and it's something that that, that nobody was ready for, and you, you can't, you can never really be ready for death at all. But uh, you know, I think, you know, that that kind of thing was what uh, was good. Now, my issue with like Thor: Love and Thunder is. Did I like the change that they did to Thor in Ragnarok? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It was needed, especially after Thor 2. But however, it was a balance. It was it was like I was telling um Swag before, it was like when Tim Burton was first given Batman in nineteen eighty nine. Mm-hmm. It was Tim Burton, but it was like, okay, let's just follow the lines of what Batman's supposed to be. Then when they said let's give Tim Burton Full, full creative control, control of, of Batman. Shouldn't then we get Batman that. Returns. I'm just like, God, this is. You shouldn't have did that. Yeah, this is like, this is like all to. This is the this mind. Is coming of from Tim. somebody who likes Tim Burton. Shouldn't have did that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's that's uh, exactly what, you know, what happened there. And I was just like, okay. That's why I felt like when it came to Thor Love and Thunder. Ragnarok was just like, okay, we gotta, you know, make Thor palatable again then th- then they, they gave taco with td everything for love and thunder and it showed i and, and the thing is he could be a he's a good director yes he, he knows is. when to do stuff he just needs to be micromanaged i personally i think that love and thunder I was a bit is another another case of I can say I was checked out like I was with Black Widow, but I never I don't think I ever got really got used to them making Thor dumber and dumber. Like he just it seemed like and I don't know if dumber is the right word, but he just is a completely different character than he was when he first came. And in some ways, usually that's good, you know, character development and whatnot. But it just seems like instead of uh, continuing his, like, character arc of him, you know, developing into a better person or hero or whatever you want to call it or God, um, he just seemed to get goofier. Yeah, but here's my thing, though. It's like, okay, there has to be, like, after Ragnarok happened. Mm Mm-hmm. Then it's like, yo, he got really serious about the Thanos thing, mm-hmm. and then I, I, I just man, he, he killed him. Like you know what I'm saying, so yeah. And then he went into a depression, and then got fat, and then but then it's like, okay, now now let me. I've learned a lot from that. 
So let me go on and do more. And that's why I thought that's what it was going to be. And that's not what, what Love and Thunder offer. I mean, because they had some good, they had some good subject matter they could have talked about in that movie. Uh, that first 10 minutes, I was just like, if they actually capitalize on this, this is something that, that actually happens in real life. That was a good first 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and I was just like, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, we are. I thought we was going there because I was like, you know, for, for, for not spoilers, it's like when you've been sitting there and you have devoted your life to this, to a God, somebody that you had know, had faith in that you can't see. Mm-hmm. And you feel as though that they failed you, or if, if you you finally get the chance to come upon them and you realize that they are not who they are, do you lose the faith? Do you wish? Do you get corrupted by something? I was like, that is something that isn't talked about enough. And then when you put it in that subject matter, you don't it don't have to be that dark in a movie where it takes away the tone of the movie, but it don't have to be to the point where it was used as a joke. Because gore, me, me saying Christian Bell is one of the best parts of that movie. Yeah. When he was on screen, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he didn't have that much time on screen. I thought I thought they dropped the ball with that. Another thing they did, I think they dropped the ball with is when it comes to Spider Man. I love Spider Man, but I love Spider Man because it's a it's like the Spider Man Endgame. It's like all the Spider Man movies that was ever made. And they culminate into this one big movie. So it's it, it, it's, it's a fan movie. Mm-hmm. But I felt as though that they did not take the opportunity to play with the multiverse like they should have. Like, I felt as though this was if this was in the Infinity Gauntlet phase. Like, if the way it, it was explained, it was like when we seen in Loki when she killed Jonathan Majors or the... Mm-hmm. the, the, the uh, <laughs> The one who was... The, I forgot what, how he pronounced his name in that one. Uh, oh, oh, no. Yeah, but when, 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 when he was there, it's like, yo, when, it was like, Loki was like, yo, you really fucked up when you killed him. Mm-hmm. To the point where we about to have fractures in the multiverse. Every movie don't have to have all kinds of multiversal things, but you gotta, you gotta establish a threat. Mm-hmm. After Loki, there, 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 what was the threat? Mm-hmm. They didn't. They didn't do a good. In my opinion, they didn't do a good job of what the threat was. So that that makes the viewer who's watching the TV show uh, don't feel rewarded when they don't get the payoff. That's I guarantee you. That's what a lot of people felt when they went to go see Doctor Strange. They was like, okay, if it's the most in the multiverse of madness, we gotta get some kind of payoff for them wrecking uh, the multiverse like that for killing. The uh, Jonathan Majors at the uh, at the end of Loki, Could, that that, that would have been more rewarding, and they didn't do that, which I thought they was gonna do with Spider Man. I thought with Spider Man being next after Loki, it's like okay, this is the first event that it shows you what happens when you mess with the multiverse, and you have now all these other people coming up. That it, it would have brought some like, oh my god, that's kind of that's kind of crazy that we we get to see all these old Spider Man villains. And from, from the other universes come because the multiverse is cracked. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I thought that would have been great moving on into, uh, and it's like, okay, well, if the multiverse is cracked, what the gods going to do about it? Well, if if the gods are not answered, maybe it's because Gore did something to them gods. That's what I thought was going to happen. In mm-hmm. Thor, if everything's going to connect that way. And to the point where, okay, well, who would have known that these Talacan existed you know, under the sea of Wakanda, maybe because something, something, something went wrong with the multiverse. It could have co- all connected that way. Mm-hmm. It fell off in the second half to me. And those were some of my biggest problems when it came to Phase 4. I, I, I'm not sitting there saying everything is bad because even some of Marvel's worst movies is better than some of the other superhero movies that we have seen. But what I'm saying is uh, that is one of the things that, at least when it came to the movies, that I had some issues with. I, I could agree with the cause and effect with that. Uh-huh. I could definitely agree with that. Um, I do feel like it was more Doctor Strange's job to branch off of Loki yeah. and uh, WandaVision because that's like, that was literally like what was next. 
after WandaVision and um, Loki. Everyone was like, okay, so Doctor Strange is going to either fix all this or ruin all this. And I agree, that payoff wasn't... that. It didn't feel great. Yeah, it, it felt kind of disappointing. Now, and once again, it doesn't have to be go grab Ben Affleck's Daredevil. You don't have to mm-hmm. do that. You just have yeah. to at least establish it as far that this thing is cracked. Because mm-hmm. right now, if people didn't watch Loki, mm-hmm. you wouldn't think it's a multiverse problem. Right. And if people who have seen Loki know that there's a multiverse problem, so where's it at? Right. You, you're not helping out nobody here. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, if I want, if I want to jump over to the TV shows real quick, um, where I want to explain my case, even though everything is subjective, I didn't hate any of the TV shows. I didn't like hate them. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say the reason why some of the things are more at the bottom of my list is because I'm disappointed mm-hmm. in it. And uh, so, why the vision don't start out strong? Because obviously, I, I, I love I love the whole TV gimmick. I love the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s early 2000s openings and stuff like that i love that and they also touched upon the multiverse because remember evan peters quicksilver came yeah which to me was a bad now do you feel like that was a multiverse or that was just disney being i felt i felt as though that since wandavision was first they had a plan before shit hit the before before it really went array backstage, because remember, they had a problem with their effects team backstage also. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, because if you look at a lot of Phase 4 stuff, the effects is not all the greatest like it was in Phase 3. You know, mm-hmm. so Marvel had a lot of problems behind the scenes. And I think with WandaVision being in the first, I think they had a plan. I think the mm-hmm. plan was to, like, this is Evan Peters, and you're going to act, naturally ask yourself the question, why is the 20th Century Fox X-Men Quicksilver in here and not Aaron Taylor Johnson's uh, Quicksilver? It's going to make you wonder. So when Loki finally does come, they explain to you what, you know, the, the time, you know, the, the time soldiers and all that stuff, and how time works and how the multiverse works. Mm-hmm. And then it can make you go back to like, oh, okay, that's what it was. It, it, it helped bring all that stuff in. And I think when the things kind of fell kind of off the rails, it, it's kind of like we just put it in there. We just didn't care because they already admitted, like we can't, especially when it came to Dr. Strange, that people didn't watch WandaVision. And I was like, how are you going to create a movie with this character in there? and try to explain certain things and you never seen WandaVision. Mm-hmm. Which is the reason why they lost their director the first time. Right, because that's not the way he wanted to do the movie, and I was I'm kind of curious to see how he wanted to do Doctor Strange the first time. Yeah, because I remember I heard Nightmare was supposed to be the original villain. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of like okay, so maybe they they had a plan. It was like, well, no, we we just don't want to do this. We just probably want to kind of make a bank a little bit. I'm just kind of like, well, I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, they brought Sam Raimi. I mean, I'm not mad at Sam Raimi, but I'm right. just saying. But uh, that that that's what it. It just ain't it, it just ain't connected for me, and but right. I, I I love the whole thing of Wandavision when it, it came it, it introduced uh you know Black Miss Marvel, and then of course we had Agatha. Ag- the the problem with TV shows is they do great build you know they do all this build up but when they, they have a uh a uh, a late a reveal yeah. yeah a late reveal to the villain with a rushed finale. Yeah, I agree. All, all the time. I'm just like, for all the episodes, I'm just like, every villain was truly revealed in like episode five, and we get a rush finale in the sixth one. I'm just like, no, we got to mm-hmm. we gotta kind of build that up. The only one that kind of, you know, uh, did kind of a balanced build, in my opinion, was, was Loki. Mm-hmm. And we actually got who the big bad yeah. is at the end of Loki. Right, because you know, I was like, they, they, they could, they could have won so many other che- cheesy ways of doing this, but they end up doing it that way. So, uh, that that's why I enjoyed the Loki series and Wandavision. I and Falcon and Winter Soldier to me, 
I actually I went back and watched the whole series. And you are right; it's so much better on the binge. Yeah, a lot of these episodes are better on the binge because I think that's why I started binging them now because it's just like it's a much better experience when you get everything back to back. Yeah, and to be honest with you, that's why Hawkeye and Miss Marvel moved down for me because I rewatched them again and I mm. said, "Damn, Hawkeye was better when it was week to week." Really? Okay. When I binged it, I was just like, I see, I'm seeing more problems in here than I than I did when it was week to week. Oh, okay. And and, and that that's why I was like, it, it I, I don't for, at least for me, the binging mechanic didn't work for me when it came to Hawkeye. But mm-hmm. uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, I was just like, okay, a lot of people did not like this because of how social or political it was. Mm-hmm. But you're dealing with Captain America. It's going to be that. That's right. what Captain America's comic is all about. And I enjoyed the way that they, that they went with with that. Granted, it it it, it rushed Anthony Mackie, and I, I I hope his suit is a little bit better in the movie. But I but I but you know when it comes to that subject matter, and him actually struggling with him being black uh, a black man representing America, and Bucky not understanding it. And when it comes, oh, here you go. Who we talk? Who we talk about? Can African American? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. He hates it. <laughs> I, you know, what I'm saying? And, and 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 how they just kind of wasted the flag smashes. But I really thought I was like that show really did uh, its thing of really taking that leap where Marvel hasn't taken that leap before. Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to what if, I, I felt as though. That was an interesting concept because after Loki, after the multiverse is fractured, it was like, so what if, right? right? If the multiverse is fractured, anything happened in the multiverse, I felt as though that was a great follow-up to like give us some stories of like, this is what could have happened or can happen since the multiverse is fucked up. Mm-hmm. And when it came to Agent Carter, when it came to uh, T'Challa, the only episode I did not like it. What if was episode seven? That was the Thor episode. I was gonna say yeah, th- I, didn't I like could that. not stand that Thor episode. But, but, but when it came to like, oh my god, this is how we're gonna do things. I think it's pretty cool, mm-hmm. and, and that's a multiverse of like that. And, and they had, they had a build up, and I was just like, you know what? If Ultron did win, they, he would be the most powerful motherfucker on this planet. Mm-hmm. Damn Thanos, that, that it, it would have been that Ultron. So, I was like, that was that. I, I felt as though it was pretty good. Uh, Moon Knight, like I said, an interesting take on it. Does it really fit in? No, it doesn't have to, but it really doesn't. Right. My biggest thing, oh, it, like, She Hulk was a, a, a show that I really enjoyed, but it wasn't for my audience. It wasn't. Mm. She Hulk could be a palate cleanser, I feel like. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. That was like a. Whew. After everything we got, it was like you know a, a yeah. breath of fresh air. That's why I, I think you it take was it, like yeah. Take it for what it was. It was I don't think it was meant to be. Like people were picking it apart, and I really don't think it was meant to be taken as serious. It was. I mean, it, it was a little bit of that because it's like how did you? I never really asked you how did you like the finale, Sway? Of um, she Hulk. She Hulk. I thought we did talk about that. I liked it. Okay. Yeah, because uh, no, yeah, 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 we did talk about it. Cause I like it because it was like answering because I was tired of whole CGI fest big bad thing and I'm like do we gotta do this again this show doesn't really need that and they just like okay we don't need this so let's not have it and I'm like yeah let's not have it so yeah. like I, I said it was it was definitely like a palate cleanser so it, it was it I was, was the, very the yeah. only thing I'm a little upset about it is because. I don't think they showcase who she hawk did they Jennifer Walter sure. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, yo, She Hawk could kick some ass. And I don't I think yeah, I think we need to get Jennifer before She Hawk. Yeah, I agree. It's just that I just never like how they do this when it comes to the Hawks. Mm-hmm. You know, now when it came to Miss Marvel Moon Knight, Miss Marvel, I was like, okay, I love it for the culture. Mm-hmm. I love it for I love that Muslim culture. I love how they showcase in that, and I love all the actors involved of it. But it, it to me it was one of them little dumb 
teen superhero type things where it was just like, oh my God, they're doing the same mistakes that bothers me when it comes to teen young kid superhero stuff. And then they had the, 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 the most optimistic thing for the clearly the person that has not their best interest. And it, it was it was taking me out of it. And I was just like, this is this is like Disney Channel superhero shit. I hate I'm just like it was taking it was take it was taking me out of it. It really was. I and, took that for what it was. Um yeah. because I expect teenagers to make those mistakes. So it was like, you know, I the only problem I had was that the director of the first episode should have been on the rest of the episodes. Yeah, I agree with that too. Because that, you know, fun, you know, aura it had just uh-huh. completely disappeared. And I hated that. Yeah, I was just like, mm, something. And I was like, the, the whole thing about making her a mutant, I was just like, I don't know if I like that or not. I understand why they try to do it. Yeah, you're like, just mad because your X-Men wasn't first. Slightly. <laughs> I, I can admit that. <laughs> I can admit that. Was, no, slightly. No matter the way when Gene called us, he look up in here, he going to shut all that shit down. If he is in here. No, I have faith. But uh, <laughs> I was like, but she she's an Avengers fan. And I was like, uh, I, 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 I don't know. And then Hawkeye, I really, I really enjoyed Hawkeye when it was out. <laughs> I can do mm. this all day. Yes. <laughs> I enjoyed Hawkeye when it was out because I because I, Hawkeye was smart enough. I went back and started watching it. Hawkeye was smart enough that it gave me. It, it was like they made an excellent last fifteen minutes of the show, <laughs> and I was just like, and, and that last fifteen minutes gripped you into uh for the next episode, and that's smart. But then when I went back and started binge, I was like, wait a minute, hold on. I thought you meant the show as a whole, like the just the last fifteen minutes, like no. the whole series. I, no, because I, I had a problem with the, the the show in general. But when I was watching it, I was like, "Hmm, this is not." It's kind of like when Swag was trying to show me that Shia LaBeouf, you know, rapping, and I was like, "Show it to me." He's like, "This is not how I remember." <laughs> <laughs> it sounded different in my head. I was like, "This is not that good." That was a very interesting situation. I, I plead the fifth. <laughs> so I was just like, while I watched Hawkeye, I was like, I don't remember it being like this. I don't remember. I said because I'm like Hawk. Jeremy Renner is just like I feel like it's whatever. I'm a Hawkeye. I can't. I feel like yeah. I can't take him serious as a superhero hero. I really can't. Like he just. Yeah, I actually feel the opposite. I feel like he can't do nothing about because when I watched Tag, I was just like, "This is Hawkeye playing Tag." No, I understand that, but I'm saying mm. like, I wish I had the words right now. I can't find the words to to articulate what I'm really trying to, what I'm really feeling about this. Uh huh. It's kind of like maybe because he takes himself so serious, I'm not taking him serious. You know what I mean? In a way, like. Prime example. I know this is a while, but when we was talking about that joke about the the commodores instead of the commanders, yeah, with the, and it's just like, bro, I can't, I can't take you serious. It's not that, it's not that deep. Gotcha. I kind of just feel like he's so intense that I just be like, all right, like calm down. <laughs> I just, I don't know. Uh, it's something about him. It, it, it was the it was the the show storyline of the, the, the father being dead, but then he really not being dead, and kind of coming back, and then it kind of like you know we kind of went over we kind of like breezed over the Ronan thing a little bit. And I was, <laughs> I, would, I would kind of would have dug more into that, but then but like I said, they brought Kingpin in, and it's like oh great we get to see Kingpin. I was like, but I'm thinking to myself like really why are you, why are you really in here though. <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> it was just like it, it, it's, it's good. I'm like, but I love seeing Mister Denard for his came here. But, but but why are you really in here though? And, and when I was going back and watching so Hawkeye, question. and I was just like, it ain't clicking like I thought it was. Did I miss something? Because me and, and, me, 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 me and Swag raved about it when it was on. But I, I just told her when you wasn't here, I was just like, it felt like it benefited from being weekly episodes because they gave me just enough to want me to wait till next week. But then when I'm binging, I'm just like, 
Hmm. Binging things. That's why I think that some of these streaming services and um, networks and things like that, they're going back to um, weekly episodes instead of having things released all at once to binge. Because I think it fares better for the the show itself. Hmm. Like the show ends up it presents better if it's like you have the cliffhanger. You want to come back and watch it kind of thing. When you watching stuff back to back to back to back, it doesn't have the same effect. Right. So, I think that you're correct. It's mm. certain things I've watched when I sit and I watch it all in one, like, sitting and I'm like, oh, okay. This is... Like, in my personal opinion, WandaVision, Falcon and Winter Soldier... What if are three that come to my mind that that benefit from binging? Yes, mm-hmm. because one of which I'm just like, you, 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 baby, you got to pick this up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying a little bit, and it benefits from binging. If I went switch, I'm so in, I'm so into it, I like I, I got to binge it. But Hawkeye and Moon Knight and Miss Marvel, I think, benefit from weekly shows. Like each week is a new episode. Mm-hmm. You know, say, but but those are my opinions. So, does anybody else have an opinion on, on the shows of what? You know, I actually feel like Falcon and Winter Soldier to me is the opposite. Um, I oh wait, wait, you're saying that? I'm sorry, you said that benefit from binging, right? I think that benefit from binging. Okay, no, I I agree with you then because mm-hmm. I was just like, I th- okay. Bro, can- Captain America being a very social and political show. Did you get taken out of it because it's Anthony Maggie? Probably, yes. I didn't. I got taken out because like, I, I'm really into spy movies, so I thought it was going to be more of that. But it got more of that on the second half versus me just coming into it. I didn't know what to expect from Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, so I kind of went in there with no expectations, and then yes, I did. I guess I did kind of get taken out of it because it's Anthony Mackie a little bit. But why just watching it? I was just like, eh, okay, okay. Are yeah, I was. Gonna... I was. I agree. I was like, cool. O- okay, like, I, <laughs> but like the it's like okay. I'm tired of saying okay. What are we doing? Where are we going? What is this? What's happening? Um. So I don't know. I feel like that. You might be right. You need to binge that. You need to binge Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel to me, it was kind of just like it wasn't oh wasn't the okay feeling, but it was just kind of like. Oh. Yeah. Miss Marvel had that one episode where I was like, all right. I think it was when they went back in time. Yeah, bro. Okay, I was, I was just like, I was like all right. look, I I, <laughs> I I am all for representation, but you have got to give me some close captions or something here because I was like, what the I, fuck is going on? It wasn't even that. It was just like, I hate when shows just do that. I, it's, it's just like, we're gearing up to the final bit and it's like, before that, we got to find our origins. And it's like, all right, come on. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, that, and, and also, I also had to feel, she never <laughs> felt like she graduated to Miss Marvel. It always felt like she was playing Miss Marvel. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the main points of Miss Marvel is that she just been, you know, cosplaying. She's just winging it. Yeah, yeah, but, 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 she, but, but she's a bad. Come on, you read the comics. She's a badass. She is, but it's like she didn't really become that until it was like an Avengers level threat. It was like, all right, I got to step up. And also, with still throws me off is the powers. It's just like the same. <laughs> You know what? I didn't take, take me out of it. Too. I was like, "This shit is lazy." I was like, "Cause you know, I was just like, okay, I, was like, you know, I don't like this." I, I was like, I st- like this st- "Stepping on crystals." I was like, "No." I said, "Where is I need my stretch Armstrong, Miss you know Miss Marvel? I, I need them big fists and them big feet." And, and I don't know whose choice it was, but yeah, go, she nah, she ran across nah. the street just stepping on these little. I said these little. uh Force field. Yeah, and I, was, I was like, "What is this?" I, I, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't like that at all. I I, I still can't can't, can't warm, warm up to it. But I yes, didn't like that at all. Yeah. Uh, 
That is uh, pretty much, uh, uh, look, I'm excited for Phase 5 because I think Phase 5, we got the Kang Dynasty and then we got the Secret Wars and stuff like that. I think they're really going to buckle down and try to make this thing more tighter. Yeah, I'm excited for Ant-Man. Yes, which, which which comes out next year also. So, uh, And then Iron Heart, which is the, the, the TV show is coming out also. Mm-hmm. What if Season 2? So I'm just like, and Loki get a Season 2 also. Now, do you feel like uh, next phase is going to have the same problems? I don't think the next phase is going to have the same problems because I, I really think that now they try and certain things passed, certain things didn't pass. Because and, we do have a lot of movies where it's like, how is this going to be added? Like Armor Wars? Yeah. Like, how is this going to fit in? You know? Because, see, I think, well, that, that also, uh, when it comes to Secret Invasion, like, how is this going to, mm-hmm. you know, you know, uh, it all depends how, how all these things are going to uh, play out. I'm hoping right. that they don't have this issue because there's going to be a lot of TV shows and a lot of movies in Phase 5 as well. But but even if you want to have five movies and five TV shows, you just got to make them tighter and, and get, give give the audience a reason for if it's going to pay off. Right. Let them enjoy the payoff. 